The scripture is fascinating as we study Esther and now the book of Job. Today, of course, we're studying Job chapter 12. That's interesting. But we're going to go back and look at some of the earlier parts. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Rod Hemper. I'm Jess. And this is, of course, the Quick Study Bible Discovery TV Weekend Edition program. Thank you for joining us. And we're going back to look at the last part of Esther and Job. I think it's interesting. What do you think, Corey? It is interesting, and you know, they jump there from different time periods. Job is supposed to represent a time period or comes from a time period uh, that's very early on in history, well, where Esther comes from a time period during the Babylonian exile, so after 586 BC. So there is quite the span of time between these two books. So it'll be interesting, our discussion after. Well, it will talking be, and, about that. and it's, you know, it's, Esther and Job and the way it's put in the Bible is interesting too. So we're going to study all of that and more. Get your Bible guide out and let's look at Job. Job chapter 12 verses 1 through 12. Then Job answered and said, No doubt you are the people and wisdom will die with you but I have understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you, indeed, who does not know such things as these? I am one mocked by his friends who called on God and he answered him, the just and blameless who is ridiculed. A lamp is despised in the thought of one who is at ease. It is made ready for those whose feet slip. The tents of robbers prosper, and those who provoke God are secure in what God provides by his hand. But now ask the beasts, and they will teach you, and the birds of the air, and they will tell you. Or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, and the fish of the sea will explain to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this, in whose hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? Does not the ear test words and the mouth taste its food? Wisdom is with aged men and with length of days understanding. Job chapter 12, verses 1 through 12. love the names of the gentlemen in Job's chapter. And this is amazing, or Job's book. This is amazing, 42 chapters. A third man named, ready for this, Zophar, steps in to support Bildad's claim. Job needs to repent and then God will restore him. Job had been responding to Eliphaz and then of course Bildad and complaining about his life to God. Now Zophar, the Namathite steps in and he begins his appealing. He says, quote, should not the multitude of words be answered? Job 11, verse two. You see, the men were doing a lot of talking, but not a lot of listening. They each felt the need to respond with their own ideas about allowing Job to challenge their thinking. We often do that too. We do that a lot. When our thinking becomes comfortable, and we do not feel the need to change. But if God is growing us, then we will continue to change over the course of our life. We should be willing to listen to God, read the word of God and follow what Jesus Christ has said to us. Now, this is the challenge that we face today. There are too many things we've designed to take up space in our world, space that God designed to be used in a different way, used for us to pray and to worship and to listen and to read the Bible daily, beloved. Very, very important. And as we continue with the book of Job, I want to remind you that we are studying this to learn. Now, a philosophy class could study Job, and that would be absolutely amazing. Um, and I would recommend that. But we're studying it to learn about what God says to us in our lives. This is very important. Get your Bible guide and turn to today's passage. And as you do, remember, I want to ask you a question, a very important question. Do you have a Bible guide? Why not? 
If you don't have a Bible guide, you can write for a Bible guide and you can uh, call us, use the addresses or the phone numbers on the bottom of the screen, or you can go to www.biblediscoverytv.com and Bible Discovery would be happy to send you a guide if you write for it. And let me, uh, or you uh, go online and make a donation there. But let me give you an example. Uh, if you wanna make a donation in any amount, we appreciate it. Or if you wanna be a partner with this ministry, Maybe you have your own reading schedule, that's fine, but you can still become a partner of this ministry and that's great. That helps us tremendously to keep the lights on and the cameras going and all of that. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. But as we study this, there's always one more, always. Job chapter 12, verses one through 12. Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus Christ as we continue to study all of the words that you've given Job as we study his friends, you know, Bildad, Eli Eliaphaz, and of course, uh, Zophar. We pray, Lord, that you would teach us your ways, show us your paths, so that we don't do the same thing they did to the man Job. And help us, Lord, to learn. And if we're going through experiences similar to what Job has gone through, help us, O oh God, to hear what you say and to trust in you. Put our faith in God, in Jesus' name. And we said together, amen. As we look at this, Job chapter 12 is, is amazing. Then Job answered and said, Job is responding to what people have said to him. He said, listen, no doubt you are the people. I love this line. This is my favorite line in the whole Bible. You are the people and all wisdom will die with you. <laughs> That's amazing. He says, but I have understanding as well I do. The same as you, I'm not inferior to you indeed. Who does not know such things as these? That's a good question. So here we learn something that Job has spoken. Job proclaims that men have said nothing new. We can say things that seem smart to us, but they're not to others. You see, they're not. And as we consider that, as we think that through, we need to understand that we're not, we're not so brilliant. We're not brilliant people, you know. Hold on a minute. We are learning and we are listening. You know, somebody could be 90 years old or 95 years old or whatever, and they're still, I can guarantee you, if they're a Christian, they believe in God, they're still learning and they're still listening. We need to take attitudes that are different than the attitudes we have. Say what you got to say. Do your best because everybody should listen to you. Hold on a minute. We listen to God. We listen to the Lord, beloved. That's what we do. And when we listen to God, that's the divine mind. We hear what he says, and that's different. We go on in the scripture to chapter 12, verse 4. Job continues, I am one mocked by his friends who called on God. And he answered him, the just and the blameless, who is ridiculed. A lamp is despised in the thought of one who is at ease. It is made ready for those who, whose feet slip. The tents of robbers prosper. And those who provoke God are secure in what God provides by his hands. Job is complaining about this. Why is evil so strong in my life? What have I done, God? Job reminds us that there are people who love God and they seem to slip. They seem to slip. You see, we should always remember that there is a spiritual fight a spiritual fight. Remember, beloved, that our world is not what we see around us. You see, Hebrews chapter 12 and chapter 11 say this very carefully. It says, we understand that the world was made by things we don't see, that there is a spiritual world. We're surrounded by, a, by this whole idea of spiritual entities. We need to remember that. Now, I believe Hebrews 9.27 when it says it is appointed once for a man to die and then face judgment. So no one really dies until they're completely gone. And that's important for us to remember because I got to tell you that once I pass away, I don't want to stay on this earth. I'm ready to get out of here and go and be with Jesus Christ, beloved. So when our body fades and our spirit no longer is contained by our body, then our spirit is immediately grabbed by Jesus who takes us at that moment. We'll see him for the first time in our lives. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I mean. 
Beloved, we need to understand that God is very much involved in our lives. That's why the Holy Spirit is inside of those who've called themselves Christian, who've invited Jesus Christ into their life. Let's get back to the scripture, Job chapter 12, verse 7. But now ask the beast and they will teach you and the birds of the air and they will tell you or speak to the earth and it will teach you and the fish of the sea will explain it to you. He's saying, listen to the nature, listen to what it says. Who among all of these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this and whose hand is life, the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. Those are, that's in God's hand. Do not the ear test the words and the mouth taste the food. Very important. Listen to what he says here. Wisdom is with aged men and with length of days, understanding. Now, Job says that there's a lot that we could talk about. I mean, a lot that we could talk about. But remember this, Job knows God and understands that he is doing something. And he, we, we learned this in chapter 19 as well. And then he says, things happen to us in life. God works with us to make us good, I love this, fighters against what? evil. Fighters against evil. You know what the problem is today? We're fighting against all the wrong things. You know, the politicians and everybody else fighting against the wrong thing. Beloved, our hearts, that's where the battles come from. Our desire for things, that's where the battle comes from. You know, there's nothing wrong with desiring, but we need to understand that the very first thing we desire for is the will of God. What is the will of God in my life? God, help me to understand what your will is. Very important. Not understand where I can go to this next cruise, where I can go to that next vacation. Like, hold on a minute. Lord, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to live my life? How do you want me to spend my retirement? How do you want me to do that? Very important that we need an understanding of what God is doing in our lives. And as we understand what the Lord is doing, then we, we come alive and we begin to see how God works in us. It's very important that we learn from Job the philosophy of, of realizing exactly what God is doing. And with that, we come to a prayer and we say this, Lord, help me to understand that we are in the midst of fighting a spiritual war, which we cannot lose because Jesus Christ has died on the cross and rose again. You see, we're winning that war as we come to know Jesus Christ. Come to know the Lord today and he will take you to places that you never thought possible. You know, it'd be nice if we considered the fact that the earth and the world was not full of sin, not full of evil, not full of all of this kind of stuff. And, and we could just live our lives and be wonderful. But the, the truth is that our parents, Adam and Eve, which I believe were real people, they sinned. They went against God. And when they went against God, that turned everything upside down. Everything in the universe, everything in the solar system, everything outside, and everything that we exist in is turned upside down. However, of course, Jesus Christ has come 2,000 years ago, given his life, and paid the cost of sin. And if we invite Jesus Christ into our lives, then he says he will take care of us. We believe that he died on the cross and he rose again in the flesh. I think that's very important. And it's important for us to realize that there is a spiritual warfare that takes place. And some people maybe don't recognize that and don't understand that because we're so secular today. But we need to remember that everything we do, if we are a believer in Jesus Christ, is resisted by the devil because he does not like the fact that there are people who believe in Jesus Christ and believe in God that are here. And we pray and fight every day and say, Lord, help us. We don't fight people because God loves people. People are created in his image. But Satan, the destroyer, that's who we fight. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important to remember. 
and uh, I think that as we continue on, we need to recognize that even Esther was somebody who did not expect to be. Uh, she was an orphan, if you would, and she was raised by her cousin, if you were Mordecai. Mm -hmm. And um, here she is, and now she becomes a queen. And this is the book of Esther. That mm -hmm. is interesting. Esther and Job. Let's go back to Esther, Corey. What do you think? Uh, I think Esther is a really <laughs> interesting book. I think I think it 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 gives us a very strange microcosm of time where you're you're in the Babylonian exile uh, that it's not really even the Babylonian exile anymore it's it's Persian, the, yeah. it's it's the Persian exile but the the exiles who are still there have settled they've integrated into society they don't want to move back uh, to Judah and Israel and and that's okay some of them some of them did and some of them uh, didn't uh, but we see here this integration into, into society and how full and complete it seemed to be for them uh, and then but even here, even here, though they've chosen to live outside of the promised land, God is still protecting his people. He is. Which, that, which that's is an, important. It's a very interesting thing. It's something that we, you may not expect as you're reading through the Bible. You know, God has allowed the exiles to return, and, but even the ones who haven't returned, he's still protecting them. He's still following through on his promise to bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And that's an interesting thing. It is, and it you know when we when we talk about that, Esther of course rises up, and she is she doesn't mean to, but she's pulled into the beauty contest that the king has because of that sure. and queen and all mm -hmm. that, and she gets in, and she's queen. I mean, mm -hmm. literally, she's mm -hmm. queen. God gives her a spirit of beauty that the king can't resist. Mm -hmm. And uh, suddenly she's the queen. Mm -hmm. Now Mordecai says, don't tell anybody who you are. You're Jewish, but don't tell anybody that. Mm -hmm. And he walks down in front of the uh, gates and he prays for her all the time. And that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then what happens is Haman is an evil guy. And he comes to the front and he says, Mordecai will not bow. Everybody's bowing, but Mordecai will not. Why didn't Mordecai bow? Because he's Jewish. And the second commandment is don't make idols other than the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to bow to him. And so he, he gets frustrated and condemns the Jews who are in that kingdom and the kingdoms of the 127 mm -hmm. province. They will die. Mm -hmm. And he sets the time, hangs the poles and everything else. Now Mordecai comes to her, comes to Esther and says, for such a time as this. <laughs> This is also what I find interesting is that though Esther didn't come to power through godly means, mm -hmm. it, wasn't, right. it, it was through a completely man-made structure. She gained influence in a non-godly way. She then, as a woman of God... She was not against God, but it just it wasn't it, it, this, our normal but, way. This yeah. wasn't mm -hmm. God's plan for yeah. marriage. This yeah. wasn't God's plan for most women, for mm -hmm. most Jewish women. This is a pagan king. This is a pagan beauty, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. She, she is then still responsible to use her influence, the influence that she has, for the kingdom of God and for the good of the people. That's the whole for such a time as this, mm -hmm. where, okay, you may not have meant this for good. You may not have meant this for God, this, this, this gaining of human power. You may not have intended this to be for God, but here you are. And you are now in a position where you get to decide, do you risk it all for God? or do you not? That's, that's Mordecai's whole for such a time as this. And Esther responds in a very scared, you see her giving people to pray and fast, mm -hmm. you see her chicken out, and when she does the banquet for the king, she totally chickens out, that's how it reads <laughs> to me, and she's like, just all I want is for you to come back for another dinner. <laughs> that sounds like a chicken out to me, and I do not blame her, because I yep. think I probably would have chickened out a few more <laughs> times. But she does, she does the right thing, and we get to see this. So I think that's another interesting yeah, thing Yeah, there. and when you look at, at the life of the king as well, I mean, he was not the most stable of, of people no. either. So, I mean, when she went in, I mean, it really was her life on the line. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, you know? I think the interesting thing about this is that, of course, it all seems backwards. That wasn't the Lord's way of a, a Jewish woman. She checked it out. Yet through all of it, you know, Mordecai is the only guy who stays strong, but he's the guy who's condemned. 
And at the end, things are different because the king then is told by Esther, it's Haman. He's trying to kill the Jews and mm -hmm. I'm Jewish. Mm -hmm. And the king freaks out and goes into the other room. He's trying to gather himself, comes back in the room. Mm -hmm. And of course, Haman's down on his knees begging the queen. Mm -hmm. And he comes in and he says, what are you gonna, you gonna take the queen too? What's the matter with you? And I order you to be killed. And, and instantly everything happens. And then, then there is a, 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 a very unique time of Mordecai becoming second in charge. Mm -hmm. And now Mordecai follows Esther and he is second in charge. That mm -hmm. is amazing because that's the same thing that happened to Joseph. That's the same thing that happens to, they become second in charge. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? In a position of influence. Absolutely. Yeah. Daniel. Mm -hmm. Daniel yeah. is another one. That's another guy who comes. And so, you know, you see that. And that is something. And then, of course, at the end, they, it's a short chapter, but they talk about Esther's, you know, celebration day and the Feast of Purim and all that. That's what that is, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Then we are introduced to Job. Completely different book. A totally different yeah. book, totally Completely different Completely different, different, much more depressing, I find. <laughs> well, yeah, it is at first. Purim is a but big, you gotta read the whole book. Very, very with costumes and treats, yeah. and then you got Job. Job is a very long-winded discourse <laughs> that, you know, yes. it's like, come on, God, please interrupt <laughs> us, uh, please. Actually, he does all of our miseries. Elihu <laughs> does, and I don't, but I personally don't believe Elihu. Mm -hmm. Some people said to me they believe Elihu's the, pre-incarnate son of God, I don't believe that at all. Interesting. But anyway, um, Elihu interrupts in chapter 32 and we see that, but then God interrupts and God says something interesting when he interrupts. What does he say, Ryan? Um, who is this who darkens counsel uh, with words, words without wisdom? Words without wisdom. Yeah, and that's to Elihu. Words Elihu without wisdom. Elihu is just wisdom. talking mm -hmm. yeah. and God comes and interrupts. So, I mean, yeah. So Elihu answered him, but he answered him very uh, selfishly and answered him very, you know, I'm going to tell you right because these guys can't mm. get it right, so I'm going to make it right. He answers them, and it's we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves here a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that becomes interesting. But until that happens, we'll deal with that on the next weekend. But until that happens, Spoiler alert. we have the... <laughs> sorry. It's coming. Um, we have the, uh, the, the introjection of Job. Mm -hmm. And Job is arguing from a standpoint... Job has the experience of losing everything and his health, but not his life. Mm -hmm. And, of course, a lot of the questions you ask today are, you know, he didn't kill mm -hmm. himself. He didn't because mm -hmm. he knew that God would not be pleased with He that. wanted an answer from God. He did. He did. This is what, okay, so w when I was reading through Job this time, something I kind of looked at it a slightly different way, whereas, uh, you know, in the ancient world, even in today's world, but in, the, in their ancient world, there were so many different gods that people served and idols that they served, idols that represented them. And these idols needed people to provide for them and they needed people to speak for them. Uh, and, uh, you know, in some ways you could say that God needed men sometimes to speak for him too through his prophets. And that, that would be a fair statement, but it was a little bit different. Um, but what, thinking about that, reading through Job this time, I found myself thinking that that is such human nature that we want to jump in and we want to speak for God mm -hmm. when we're presented with a problem, when we're presented with maybe a challenge to our faith, we want to jump in uh, and, and we want to speak for God. We want to fix the person's question. We want to give the answer. And you see all of Job's friends doing mm -hmm. that. They, it, they, they're confronted and conflicted with Job's suffering as well. So they're going in and they're answering. But sometimes all the time, I think, God needs to speak for himself. And that's what we see Job coming back to every time. He goes, that's great that you think that, but it doesn't apply in my case because I didn't sin. As far as I know, I fulfilled all the commandments of God. I've, I've sacrificed, I've asked forgiveness, all that stuff. So where is God? Where is he? What's going on? And they couldn't answer that question. As Job was waiting for God, they were trying to speak for God. And I, I, I want to learn that lesson, that sometimes you can't answer the questions of someone else's heart. Yeah, sure, maybe sometimes God will use you to answer questions in other people's hearts. But when you're confronted with a situation where someone you love is challenging God, it, is at, it has their faith challenge and needs to hear an answer from God, God knows how to answer that person. 
So I really believe that in that situation, and I'm trying to remember this as I move <laughs> forward because I don't want to be like Job's friends, praying for that person and, and asking that God would answer their questions mm -hmm. in a way that they would understand and then just trying to be there. So even if it's challenging to your own faith, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because if God is true, if God is real, he can answer mm -hmm. for himself. He's not an idol. That's absolutely right. And thank you for bringing that up, Corey. And I think it's important that that we hear that, that we're, when we think we have to answer the question, we're limited because we're human beings. Mm -hmm. But when God answers, God doesn't answer like we think he should answer, but he answers from his word. One of the things that uh, I did was uh, we, we, I've been fascinated by the book of Galatians and we put together a new series, six series sermons series that are specifically on this. I haven't done them on television or publicly, but I did them on this DVD. They're exclusive for you. And uh, it's great for Bible studies and also great for you if you have a group of people that you're, you have in your home and you're studying the Bible with them. And this is uh, something that's very important and brand new. It also, by the way, it has uh, Quick Study 2011 and Quick Study 2008 and 2000, oh my goodness, 2009 and uh, some really interesting things on here in the bonus features of it. But the, the main document is the six sermons. Now I'm going to do more of these as, the time, as time goes on. And, you know, as the Lord gives me wisdom and gives us wisdom and all of that, we'll try to cover all the books of the Bible. But you can have it uh, for a donation of uh, $60 or more. We appreciate that. Write to us, call us, or go to www.biblediscoverytv.com. We'd be glad to send it to you if you write to us and uh, call or call us. Call us is a good way to do it, by the way. So call today. 